Hello everyone. In the previous video, we discussed about protostomia and deuterostomia. Okay, so we discussed about how the gastrointestinal tract develops and how we get the protostomic and deuterostomic animals based on the development of the gastrointestinal tract. In this video, we will discuss about body plans. Okay, so our topic of discussion today is body plans. And what body plans means for any organism is the basic structure of the body, the basic outline of the body. Okay, so that's what is body plan. Now, to start with, let us start with this. Uh, let, let us start this discussion by saying that uh, every type of body plan we can think is not actually feasible in nature. Why is that so? This is because there are certain restrictions to body plans. What are these restrictions? First of all, we have to have a cut the correct amount of surface area is to volume ratio. So first of all, we need to have surface area to or is to volume constraint this is the first constraint we are facing okay so another constraint over here is that we have the architectural constraint which will, I will explain very soon architectural constraint and the last one according to me is the phyletic constant phyletic constraint so what do these mean? First of all, the surface area to volume constraint is quite simple to understand because if we have a large volume and it shares only a less, only a small amount of surface area, which will cause lower amount of oxygen or nutrition to enter the cell. Okay, so if that happens, then what happens is that the total area of the cell is poorly nourished the total volume of the cell is poorly nourished and therefore the cell cannot live longer this is same in case of any organism also so in an organism um, uh, considering that it is a collect collection of many cells we find that the organism must have a good amount of contact between the liquid medium or the medium it is in so that all the cells are arranged in such a way that there are there is a lot of surface area so what do i mean first of all let us take an example of an amoeba what if an amoeba is of the size of an elephant if that happens then the nutrition or any any air particle or oxygen okay so amoeba are aerobic organisms right so oxygen will not be able to diffuse through the entire volume of the amoeba therefore the amoeba will not be able to survive right so each organism each organelle requires the oxygen to survive so if some organelles die their function will be stopped and therefore the whole amoeba will die same is the case for any organism so let us take the example of hydra for that what happens in hydra is that it has a sac like arrangement which we will discuss very soon so it has a sac like arrangement which in which the body wall of that sac consists of two layers of cells so one layer face outside so one layer of cells face outside like this and another layer of cell face the inside and this is very beneficial why is it very beneficial because this is a sac like arrangement so the top portion is empty okay so water can come in the sac it, it acts as a di digestive system as well as a circulatory system for that Okay, and the water can exit through the same pore, and therefore, as the water, these are marine organisms, right? So water, if the medium is totally water, so water can come in and come, go out freely through in the sac, and therefore, the this la this layer, the inner layer of cells are totally getting bathed with this water, and what about the outer layer of cells? They are already in the water medium, so they are also getting water. So this this type of arrangement is causing a lot of surface area exposed in the surroundings and this is very essential for any body plan 
So let us move on to the next constraint, which is the architectural constraint. So what do I mean by architectural constraint? That is, the let us start with an example. That is, the first land, uh, first vertebrates. Okay, so first land vertebrates were four limbed. Okay, so they had four limbs, four legs. Okay. Now, what happened is that the vertebrates started evolving, and they evolved into some evolved into birds. That is, uh, phylum Avis. Uh, sorry, class Avis. So, in that class, what happened is that the four limbs got modified into wings. Okay. So now you may argue. I mean, you may uh, one may put the argument that why only the four limbs got modified into the wings. It may happen that. Two more limbs arised, and they got modified into wings, resulting in four lim four limbs to walk on the ground as well as two wings to fly. Certainly, these are cases of legendary animals such as the Pegasus. Okay, so these are not possible. Why? Because evolution doesn't work that way. Evolution works on the basis of changes. Okay, it cannot create new structures. So once the basic plan has been set up. The structure uh, evolution modifies it. Evolution changes the structure, like it changed the four limbs into the wings. So it cannot, it cannot create anything. Okay, it cannot create anything. It just modifies it, and therefore we have an architectural constraint. We cannot have any type of body plan. We cannot have six-limbed animals, uh, six-limbed vertebrates now, because the basic structure has been developed. Why? Yeah, because the basic structure has been developed. That is, they are always four-limbed. Another thing is the phyletic constraint, and this is digging deep into genetics level. What it says is that we have certain genes, which, if we mutate those genes, we find that the organism cannot survive. They are very crucial for the survival of that organism. For example, our bilateral symmetry is constant. Is is controlled by a set of pathways, a long set of pathways, which cause our body to be bilaterally symmetric, and therefore those pathways are controlled by genes because everything is controlled by genes after all. And if those genes are mutated, then the whole pathway collapses, and maybe the organism that results after that mutation is asymmetric or radially symmetric, but that organism is not able to survive because. That organism lacks many components, which is essential. Okay, so some genes are there which are not not feasible for mutation. If that mutation occurs over there, that is lethal mutation. So that causes another constraint because mutation in gene results in mutation in proteins, and it results in a uh, different phenotype, right? So if some genes cannot be mutated, then some different phenotypes could, cannot be created. and this causes another constraint to the total number of possible body plans so these were three constraints which does not allow us to have all the possible body plans even after 3.8 billion years of continuous evolution we have a lot of species with us but not whatever but we don't have whatever the ta whatever the shape of the species will be as we imagine So let us discuss a few of those body plans on the basis of gastrointestinal tract development. So first of all, we have the cellular aggregate type of body plan. Cellular aggregate body plan, and what this type of body plan is is what the name means actually. the name means it is a cellular aggregate and so it is a cellular aggregate so the cells have just come together like a person has come to reside in a colony it can live that that person can live without that colony also it can live in in solitary also but that person feels that it is more comfortable to live in that colony with a lot of more people So same is for the cellular aggregate body plan. It is present in case of sponges, that is phylum Porifera, and in cellular aggregate type of body plan, the cells have just come together. They, if we separate the cells, the cells can live together. So uh, means if we separate the cells, the cells can live individually also. But 
so that means that the cells are not totally dependent on the on each other's function but they are starting to come together so that after some stages of evolution or after some phylums we find that the stages the cells have started to show division of labor okay and this type of body plan is also called as the perforated sac type of body plan perforated sac let us write perforated sac only why is it called so if we look at the basic structure as we told that the body plan is body plan means the basic structure of the body how is it planned so in case of sponges we find that they have the central osculum which is a large canal type of okay through which water goes out sorry through which water goes out and water comes in through small canals okay so water comes in that osculum through small canals and those canals are lined by cells so they have a lot of surface area over there but that's not the topic of the video the water comes in through these canals and goes out so it looks like a perforated sac so if you consider this portion as a sac this osculum as a sac then the water is coming in not through the main pore of the sac but in between the sac right so that they are the perforations in the sac so therefore it is a perforated sac type of body plan what is another type of body plan it is found in a little bit developed organisms that is the blind sac type of body plan blind sac blind sac body plan what is it actually it is also a sac but it doesn't have those perforations as it as we have here it is present in in nidaria in tenophora and all those type of organisms where the digestive tract is incomplete so since the digestive tract is incomplete so the any type of food materials come in through this pore whatever pore we call it anal pore or oral pore and it has to leave it leave through the same pore so what it causes is that so the digest tract is not complete and again as i said that it is acting as uh, the same uh, it is the this digestive system is only acting as a circulatory system the why it is called blind because it has one end one opening and no uh, no other opening to go out so that maybe that's why it is called blind but this is a little bit bizarre according to me a little bit vague but you may visualize it a little bit that's why it is called blind somehow okay and the last type of body plan we are going to discuss in this video is tube within tube body plan so tube within tube and this is a very good type of imagination about the body structure so it as it says that as the name says it is actually a tube within tube so one tube is there and till now you may have got what i am going to say why is it a very good name for this type of body plan just see how it looks like the tube within tube body plan means that the digestive system is finally complete so the food particles enter through one pore that is the oral pore and then escape in the other pore and the digestion process is done in this digestive can ca digestive tract also they have normally they have the circulatory system so they can grow grow thicker in size as i said that these type of organisms such as nidaria and tenophora have only two cell layers thick wall but they can grow thick wall because they have the circulatory system to supply that layer of thick wall and again this type of body plan is present from the phylum nematoda till the most developed organisms that are the human beings homo sapiens so this type of body plan is present even we have one digestive tract which is a hollow tract which we may which may be compared as a tube and again then we have the, our body body walls or body layers and then we have the outer skin layer so that is the outer tube okay so that type of comparison can be done till till our our class also our species also the most developed species till now on earth so these were the body plans i hope you understood this lesson well so we will uh, please like comment and subscribe and we will see you in the next video bye